Ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right, my topic is weight gain, and my major claim is that regular fast food consumption leads to obesity. So this day and age when we have a fast food restaurant at every, or ad at every corner at any given time, the temptation of saving time and money is just to stop at a window away. So more than two in, more than two in three adults were considered to be overweight or have obesity. According to national health and nutrition examination surveys that were conducted in 2014 to 2015. The meals advertised at some of the most popular fast food restaurants will cover over half of a person's daily cal caloric intake. This fact can be checked by going to any fast food restaurant's nutrition fact and looking up the dense amount of calories packed into each complete meal. So, as Solomon Branch mentioned in his Live Strong article, simply consuming more food than your body needs is the primary cause of weight gain, but eating too many foods that are high in fat and sugar content is also a contributing factor. With that leading me to my next point, macronutrients. The, uh, which is protein, carbs, and fats. The meals come complete with an abundant amount of fat and carbohydrates in properly proportioned to the amount of protein in the meal. Now, these meals can be altered or many items purchased separately in order to get a macronutrient profile, a better macronutrient profile, but this is assuming that all consumers have been educated on proper nutrition. The easiest way to continue gaining weight is to continue eating more calories or energy than you expand daily. In most obesity, in most people, obesity is caused by eating too much and moving too little. If you consume high amounts of energy from your diet but do not burn uh, enough energy through exercise or just physical activity, the surplus energy will turn into fat, as mentioned in an Australian government-ran health site. Making your own food also allows you to see and control those factors and in turn lead to better food choices in quantity and quality. Leading us to our next point, quality. The more hands a product moves through, the more chances it has of losing quality and being affected by natural factors such as heat, cold, vibrations, impact, and human touch. The road that food goes through to go from farm to table is extended when factors such as handling, transportation, and storage are put into place. The large quantities of food products that fast food restaurants call for results, result in measures that have to be put into place in order for food to make it to the table. Farming practices have had to change in order to keep up with the mass quantities being requested. For animal products, the mass farming of animals has led to more disease within those animal groups. To help reduce the number of sick animals, antibiotics are being used as a control measure to keep animals healthy enough to eat. CNN wrote an article mentioning that when livestock producers administer antibiotics routinely to their flocks and herds, bacteria can develop resistance, thrive and even spread to our communities, contributing to the larger problems of antibiotic resistance. This problem in animals is being transferred to humans eating these food sources. The CDC estimates at least two million Americans contract antibiotic resistant infections every year and that 23,000 die as a result. Due to foods needing a long, sh uh, long shelf life in order to make it to the restaurant and then to our mouths, highly processed and nu uh, nutrient fortified foods are utilized in order to be more cost effective. These kinds of foods in turn are processed in our bodies very fast, storing it into fat if energy is not immediately needed not immediately needed. And do not leave your um, you satisfied in comparison to similar foods that do not keep as long but respond much better in our bodies. Corn is a product that started being mass produced due to its versatility and ability to keep costs down. Corn is broken down into many products including high fructose corn syrup, which is an additive to ma many food products and is identified by our body as sugar. Another way corn makes it to our mouths is through the animals we eat. Mass-produced animals are fed corn due to its cost-effectiveness and in turn making a lot of animals fat and unhealthy due to the fast weight gain increase of such a calorie-packed uh, food. According to a study referred to in an ABC article, more than a quarter of chickens bred intensively for meat have difficulty walking and are crippled by rapid weight gain, sleep deprivation, cramp conditions, according to a study funded by Britain's Farming Ministry. The study found that an average of um, that an average age of 40 days, that an average age of 40 days, more than 27.6% of the birds studied had difficulty walking, and 3.3% were almost unable to walk despite culling policies designed to remove severely lame birds from flocks. And one can use the study as an example of what happens when overeating and inactivity take place. My last and most important factors to the consumption of fast foods leading to obesity are the addictive properties and dependencies that occur, both mental and physical. Sugar has been known to cause similar chemical responses in the brain as opiates and other commonly known addictive drugs. 
the U.S. National Library of Medicine National Institutes of Health Rights. That intermittent sugar access also acts by way of opioids in the brain, meaning your brain gets the same reward reaction when you feed it sugar as it does when you take opiates or other drugs. Sugar is in some way added to most fast food items, including savory foods, such as the breads and sauces. Just like with drugs, intake of sugar needs to increase to continue getting the same effect, feel good effect, you were getting from when you took the first dose. That feel good effect you get from sugar, just like drugs, may be used to fill voids in one's life. A study notes that the behavioral findings with sugar are similar to those observed with drugs of abuse. So rat, uh, rats fed at daily intermittent sugar and chow escalate their sugar intake and increase their intake during the first hour of daily access, which they define as a binge, so they eat a binge eating. Also, like drugs, withdrawal symptoms occur when a person ceases administering the drugs. With sugar, this may include a decrease of appetite, irritability, as well as nausea. A person may start depending on sugar and need to satisfy their uh, satisfied cravings whenever they arise. Uh, these traits of one ingredient should be enough should be enough to deter a person from continuing this unhealthy behavior. But the addictive factors keep the consumer wanting to consume, adding to the attractiveness in the, is in the, is the convenience of fast food. The idea of sitting in your car and pulling up to a window and having someone give you food is very irresistible and becomes almost a ritual. This ritual and these eating habits have contributed to people's medical bills going up. Uh, obese adults spend 42% more on direct healthcare costs than adults who are healthy weight, as mentioned in an article by the State of Obesity. So getting a hold of this issue will help grow a stronger nation and stronger economy as well. All right, Max, the propositions clearly identified at the beginning. Uh, you're identifying fast food as the primary cause of obesity, but there's a lot of stuff that's presented in the argument that is not related to uh, the, the link that you were making here. There's other stuff that I think might be relevant to other issues, but uh, it's being conflated with this idea that the fast food is the primary uh, source of the obesity issue, and I think that that's a, a problem. There is no preview of what the supporting structure is going to be, and in fact, I couldn't really discern a structure in the speech. I heard a lot of information and a lot of ideas that were being strung together, but they don't necessarily build very well together. It's you know random pieces of information, and sometimes the information is repeating itself in one spot, you know, three or four pieces of information later. So I get an argument about the dangers of sugar, and then there's something else about uh, some other issue like the chickens. And then I'm back to talking about sugar again. You need to kind of group that information a little bit more effectively to build uh, a, a supporting structure here. The problem that I see here is mostly that there's not a clear supporting structure. We've got a lot of information, some of which is relevant to the issue of fast food, some of which seems completely unrelated to fast food. And as a consequence, uh, you know, it, it's hard to keep track of where you're going with this argument. Um, there's, there's some good uh, data here, but uh, sometimes it's not cited very completely. Uh, I, you know, I got a CNN reference to a study on uh, antibiotics. Um, there's some early research that uh, seems to be based on government information, but it's not consistently presented here. Uh, you had one piece of information that sounded like it would be pretty important uh, that mentions that 23,000 people die because of the um, uh, bacterial problems with the food, and I guess that's related to the handling of the food someplace in the fast food chain. That's one of those things that I think needs to be shored up a little bit. But that's a pretty important piece of information, and you rush by it very quickly. I don't know what this is based on. Um, the source that you provided is, you know, I'm not saying that it's unreliable, but I think that uh, especially when that's your significance point, uh, it needs to be expanded on and you need to make it a little bit more authoritative. Um, the, the thing about the chickens, I'm trying to figure out, okay, so we got a bunch of chickens that can't walk. How is that related to fast food and obesity to humans? I don't know. 
I thought at one point that you were trying to draw an analogy to, well, you know, if we feed, feed the chickens like uh, they're eating fast food and they can't walk, then humans, you know, if they're eating fast food, then they can't walk either. And I thought, well, that seems like a strange analogy to be drawing. I'm not sure that's the, that's the point that you're actually trying to make. Um, so I, I ultimately am unclear as to how that information advances the point that you're talking about. Then we get back to the uh, sugar issue, and I think that, that there's a good argument here to be made that fast food products, for instance, contain higher levels of sugar, which creates this desire to eat uh, more, uh, that you're talking about kind of the addictive sort of thing. And I think that's a stronger link to the fast food argument than what you had in the middle part of the speech. So uh, I'm not sure why it gets buried as the last idea in the presentation. It seems like it ought to be more front and center um, in, in the argument. You're rushing a bit during the presentation also. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of data here, but it seems like it's not as clearly advancing the claim that you're presenting as it ought to be. And that's mostly because of structural issues in the body of the speech. And I know that you made some changes in your argument, and that's probably, you know, I, I really wish I could have given you more feedback on what you had in the body of the speech. And you've got an outline somewhere that you're going yeah, to get me. Okay. All right.